super, super, super freaking lazy. Uh, but a video had to be made though. In today's video, I'm gonna be listing 10 reasons why I think tourism is failing or is not taking off at a pace that it's supposed to in Burundi. Before I begin the topic, I just wanna thank everybody that is currently subscribed to the channel. I thank you guys for being faithful and I thank you guys for staying loyal this whole time on the channel. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back just so we can start the video. Welcome everybody to yet another video. This is Not So Burundi in here today, coming to you with another episode of Controversial Fridays. Today is an interesting topic and I'm not, a, I'm not even gonna talk anymore. Let's just jump straight into the 10 points why I think tourism is being held back in Burundi. Without any further ado, let's get into it. And reason number one for me would be that uh, Burundi has a tarnished image and I mean that in the sense that for the longest time ever, we've been known for civil war, we've been known for political unrests, and we've been known for, uh, okay, this is not something that we are internationally known for, but if you are Burundian, a Burundian that follows up on Burundians on, on social media, you know that the diaspora is particularly unhappy with the way Burundi is, with the current status in Burundi at the moment. So we have a tarnished image in the sense that the media that is put out there about Burundi and the media that persists to this day is for the most part just negative media. Uh, negative media in a sense that if you were to go searching on Google on Google right now or on, on YouTube at the moment, most of the thumbnails that will pop up are, you know, about the events in 2015, 2010, 2005, which was a period in time when it wasn't so particularly uh, pleasant to live to live in Burundi at, at the time because you know of the war, the violence, the guns, the grenades and all of that. So that's what you would find in Burundi at the moment. And this being the the image of Burundi that is put out there, I don't think that is an image that uh, that would pretty much encourage or draw in the tourists to come to Burundi. So in that sense, our image is tarnished and we as a country, I feel like we are not doing enough to clean up that image. And even if we can't clean it up, well, at least we could, we're not doing enough to flood the internet with with the opposite of what's already out there if that makes any sense our image is tarnished and we are not doing enough to clean up the dirt that is on the internet with regards to burundi so that's my reason number one why uh tourism is not taking off as we would like it to be or as it should reason number two is that um okay so basically tourism for me uh, begins at the airport, you know, at the point of arrival. The airport is where we welcome anybody who's anybody that wants to come visit Burundi for whatever reason. And that being said, we have, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, without, um, and I don't mean to uh, insult or come off as condescending to the people involved or to the people that are in charge of the airport, but we have an airport that is really old. We have an airport whose staff seems to be unmotivated. Uh, we have an airport with a subpar lounge, regardless of whether it's a VIP lounge or a regular lounge for economy economy uh, passengers. But my point is that the airport is really old. The lounges are really old. As soon as you come in through the gate when you're landing, the baggage check-in is really subpar. The floor is not well maintained. The bathrooms are not well maintained. Like it is honestly a shame that we still have that airport running to this day. It's the same thing that's been existing since it was ever built really in my opinion. So that's the other thing the other reason why I think we are not able to attract tourism as much as we possibly could. One and two, on my recent uh, Twitter um, escapade, no, not escapade, that's not the word that I want to use. Uh, I'm on Twitter for, uh, a lot of the time, not for posting. I'm not known for posting anything on Twitter, but I, I like to go on Twitter to read. And uh, the one thing you would notice, especially every time a topic about the airport pops up, is that you have a lot of the diaspora that is, in my opinion, ashamed to invite their friends non-burundians to burundi just because of what the airport looks like and that's just us missing out on potential tourists that could compound over the years you know it's one person tells the other tells the other and the tourism industry just grows like that so that's one of the reasons why in my opinion i think tourism is being held back 
the airport is really not so inviting and the diaspora is not does not feel encouraged to invite people over because of that that's reason number two reason number three would be that our country our country as a whole really has uh poor infrastructure the roads are not really all that good the internet isn't that good whether or not it be cellular internet or dedicated internet providers that you know provide internet through wi-fi services it's not that good and the third reason on the infrastructure would be that um burundi's virtual guidance system is virtually non-existent uh, what i mean by that is that um when it comes to virtual assistants i'm basically talking about you know uh, stuff like uh, google map it is usually up to the individual businesses to map out their locations and fill in all of the information that is required on google maps for people traveling within burundi to easily find them but at the same time it could also be a campaign that is government ran in order to encourage or rather sensitize these people to map out their businesses on google maps on websites or whatever so in a sense that's what i mean by the virtual guidance system is pretty much non-existent and you know without a virtual guidance system it becomes uh, somewhat of an inconvenience for a tourist to move around the country because then they need to hire these agencies that deal with uh, uh, helping out tourists travel within the country or if not an agency they need to hire out individuals and that means that they spend money that they could have otherwise saved up to enjoy more when it comes to sightseeing and just overall traveling within the country so when you have to incorporate a third party to help you navigate around the area then usually that just it takes away from the privacy of touring a place you know what i mean yeah so for me that's um reason number three why i think tourism is being held back in burundi all right reason number four to why i think tourism is held back in burundi burundi has an anti-camera environment uh what i mean by that is um if you want to promote tourism number one you have to stand for individual content creation it is the individuals that create content that help advertise a country if not a country just a particular place of interest to tourists and so when a country is anti-camera as a whole if the culture is anti-camera if the environment is anti-camera with regards to laws and culture then it it defeats the whole purpose of uh wanting to promote tourism in a country so you know the only way to promote tourism is through content creation and the government cannot run that campaign on its own you need individual content creators to be able uh, you know to help out in the process when it is not so easy to move around with a camera when the when there are so many restrictions as to as to places that individuals can film with cameras then it just it defeats the whole purpose of trying to sell the country to a global market so an uh an example of this would be for instance uh you 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 could bring in a drone into the country it's it's fine to bring in to bring a drone into burundi but when it comes to flying the actual drone is a completely other process i filled out the form that was required to uh register the drone and have it um accepted or rather green lit to fly and this was four five weeks ago and i haven't heard i haven't gotten any response from the aviation authority ever since and even when you in even when you read the form when it comes to stuff like you need to register a drone for every time you want to fly and you have to state the exact place and time that you plan to fly the drone in this is already way too many restrictions like you can already tell that this is that that that, that these questions that you have to answer are pretty very much anti-drone in most countries any drone that weighs less than 250 grams is basically considered a toy of some of some sort and any uh because you know it's lightweight it can really cause no harm if you were to fall on somebody from the sky and so here they don't have that here any any drone is a drone and all drones have to be have to undergo 
have to undergo the same type of scrutiny. And if you if you were to put drones to the side when it comes to, you know, stuff like, you know, just moving around with the camera, vlogging, if you want to vlog around a market area, if you want to vlog around a, uh, a busy street in town, if you want to vlog around a touristic site, you will find all these little inconveniences here and there. And a lot of the inconveniences really is usually brought about by our favorite men in blue, you know, the police. Everybody has a sense of assumed authority authority and I don't even think there is a law or policy that controls camera but you know you have people assuming authority and so you might come across uh, inconveniences that stop you from filming freely in public there is that and the other thing is that you have a culture of people that are very camera shy you know they assume that they have a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, usually you cannot be expected. You cannot expect it of, of, you cannot expect of other people to, uh, respect your privacy in public ground. What I mean by this is, is that, uh, if you are in a public space, it is upon the individual to ensure that they maintain their privacy. So basically if, if you and I are outside and I'm filming and I happen to direct the camera in your direction, you cannot, you cannot then tell me that. Uh, do not film me or I do not allow you to film me. The permission is not yours to give if it is in a public setting. It is thus then left to the individual to ensure that they are private. So if you if you have a hat, then you would cover up your face like that because you're in public. What I cannot do is enter your house and start filming because then I'm entering in a, in a private compound, private area. But anyway, that's the topic for another day. So yeah, that's reason number four. And uh, reason number five is that um i don't know how to say this in a way that uh does not make me uh how do i say this without coming off as insulting or as pointing fingers to specific individuals out there <laughs> But I'm going to try uh, to say this in the safest way possible that I know how, which is, um, in my opinion, I feel like the the workforce that is put up to lead or oversee tourism, the tours, the tourism sector is somewhat uh, unexposed, unmotivated and ununderstanding. They are not so understanding of what the whole concept of tourism is. Let me just take a quick sip of water and come back and explain. OK, so the, the workforce that has been set up to oversee the tourism sector for me is unmodernized. You cannot use people that are not modern to oversee the tourism sector where it is expected for the most advanced uh, populations in the world to come visit the said touristic uh, sites, which happens to be a country that is the topic of discussion today. And so in my opinion, I feel like the people that work in the ministries you know, the people that work in places of touristic attractions to me, the people that are made to oversee those sites are, they are not as exposed, not as motivated as they should be in order to make sure that, you know, tourism takes off in these places. You know, they do not put enough effort into advertisement. They do not put enough effort into, you know, sensitizing people, put enough effort into reporting to the government of the things that are missing, reporting to the government of the budget that could potentially potentially that is required to potentially change or revitalize these particular sites and I don't want to talk too much about this particular point but I know a lot of you get in a sense what I'm trying to say and reason number six why I think tourism is not taking is not taking off as 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 well as it should be is that um, for the most part I feel like the push I feel like the push towards uh, tourism in Burundi is somewhat seasonal so what i mean by that is um only during the month of may to september that the push to tourism begins to take up steam so it's uh may june july august september it's within these five months in a year where people begin to you know begin to uh, talk about tourism people begin to push tourism and just encourage tourism in a way you know everybody puts content out there and you know burundian internet is flooded with touristic um with a theme of tourism for five months only in june and september and then after September, everything just everything just dies out. No talk of tourism, nothing. And to me, that's the reason why you know tourism doesn't take off because you know promoting tourism in a country that is trying to find footing in the uh, favorite touristic destinations of the world, this is a job that has to be done all year round, not just seasonal. January all the way to December, there has to be a push 
throughout all 12 months of the year in order for you know the tourism industry to really take off in Burundi and I'm afraid five months in a year is just not going to cut it it's not going to cut it at all and so that's reason number six why I think tourism is not taking off as well as it should and then reason number seven would be the touristic sites in Burundi are not well serviced I get it there has to there has to have been a point where all of these sites were built and created but ever since then in my opinion they have not been well maintained at all very little is being done to revitalize the z particular site and very little is being uh very little assistance in monetary value is being pumped into these sites to enhance them to make them better you know the same thing that you saw this year is going to be the same thing that you see the next year and within the next five years so on and so forth without any change for instance if you take a look at uh, the 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 um, Musée Vivant. That place has been looking the same ever since the day it was built. <laughs> there has been little to no change at all in that little zoo. In my opinion, they should have changed the location of that zoo a long time ago. Change the location, bring in new animals, bring in new species, expand the area. But ever since I came here in 2006 to this current date, I'm afraid that place has been looking the exact same. And then when you go to the hot springs, which is another um, favorite talk of uh, the tourism industry, the hot springs are another disappointment, really. OK, so basically you, you have the hot springs that uh, that that where water boils and overflow overflows and then they they build these little streams that take water from the hot spring and take um have the they have the water flow from the hot spring all the way to these little man-made pools that, that they create where the hot water flows into and people get to you know swim within the hot water the tiles within these little pools are dirty these are tiles that needed to have been replaced a long time ago or cleaned you know washed tiles are dirty um the metal doors that restrict water flow you know, because uh, after swimming or when the water gets cold, they open up these little metallic doors to let the water flow out. And then they close to let the fresh water come in. Rusty doors, unpainted. I mean, come on, like there's not enough. That's, there's not enough um, funds that is, that, that is being pushed into re revitalizing these said particular touristic sites. The example that I gave being Musée Vivant de Zoo and the ho hot water springs that are currently available in the country. And then reason number eight for me would be that um, I feel like there isn't enough finances that are being pumped into the tourism industry by the government. And in my opinion, it's not something that I hold against the government, really, because, you know, we are a small country we are a small economy that has other things to worry about at the moment other important things not like uh, the budget of our government is going towards other important things and tourism is not at the at the top of the list I get that and so that is the reason why there isn't enough finances being pumped into the government and so that's the reason and that's the reason why tourism is not taking off because you know there isn't enough support from the government and it's and I understand why there isn't but you know there's gonna be there's gonna come a time when a budget needs to be allocated to tourism if you want tourism to then someday pay back you know you either put no money at all into it or put a huge amount into it because if you're gonna keep throwing uh, crumbs of finances into tourism you're never going to get anything back it's just basically going to be raining in the desert so yeah that's reason number eight for me and then reason number nine as to why i think tourism is not taken off and i have said this many 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 times for me it's basically look language for me is an issue seven countries in east africa only two countries speak french and they are not the main economies of east africa and burundi being uh, one of the two countries that speak french we are at a disadvantage when it comes to uh promoting tourism within our country i don't know how we're going to change it but you know changing from french to english would be one way to go and you know there was one subscriber that commented on my last clip if you haven't seen that clip i'll just post a link to that clip up here he said that he didn't think that language was such a big deal because he gave France as an example he said look at France that is a favorite touristic destination in the world and my response to him was that well Burundi is not France Burundi is a small country that is looking to build a footing in the 
tourist industry. And if you are not a major touristic attraction, then you you are the boot you are the bootlicker in this scene. You need tourists. They don't need you. You're not drawing them in regardless anyway. So you might as well do what it takes to make sure that you draw them in. France did a lot when it comes to selling the country until it, it became uh until it got to a point where it was a thing of prestige to be known to have been in France at any particular point in time. You know, just taking a picture with an Eiffel Tower is a thing of dreams for people. That's not the case with Burundi. So we have to do whatever it takes to make sure that we are a favorite touristic destination and French is holding us back. It's not holding France back because it doesn't matter whether you speak French or not. People want to go to France, not the same for Burundi. And so, yeah, language is holding us back. All, all, all of the other five East African countries speak English and coming to Burundi, I'm afraid, is an inconvenience to most people because they have to think about language barrier and we are not a favorite touristic destination anyway. So how do you bring them in? I say get rid of French, replace it with English. I don't know what you, you I don't know what your opinions are, but feel free to comment in the comment section. And then point number 10, which is the very last point is I feel like, I don't know, as uh, Burundians, as as a collective, we do not understand the potential that tourism has for Burundi, which is the reason why tourism doesn't take off because we do not know how to build an environment that is touristic friendly. We do not know how to go about boosting the sale, the selling of Burundi to the world. We are unexposed. And I think we, I don't know, we just don't know how, really, we don't know how. I might speak for myself as an, indiv as, as an individual, but you know, I think I can speak for most people that we, we are yet to understand what tourism is to do for us as a collective. And so that being said, cannot push something whose potential or whose um, income, whose level, uh, we, we, we are unable to support something whose benefit we do not understand. And yeah, so that would be the last point for me. And that's pretty much it for this Friday, this controversial Friday that comes to you every week. And that's going to be it for me, really. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.